Hi everybody, my name is Richard Michael Owen. I'm a British classic car restorer and enthusiast, and today we're taking a look at my junkie type engine. This is a project I'm doing here at Owen Automotive. It's a shop run by myself and my dad, Mike Owen, and we specialize in doing only carbureted British sports cars, a lot of maintenance and restoration. So yeah, three months ago, kind of embarked on this project, bought this engine really without knowing what it was like inside at all, and wanted to share the discovery with you, and so that's where episodes one, two, and three really showcase what it was like to dismantle a completely seized engine. And that's what this was. The pistons were completely seized. The, the cylinder head studs were hard to get out. Uh, even the valve train had some issues. So yeah, that's where episode one was. It was getting off that cylinder head. It's way easier said than done. It just gets stuck on those long studs and even the last inch is really hard to get off. So once that cylinder head was off, kind of motivated to try other things. Uh, one was take out the cylinder head studs themselves, which in this 1969 block go way deep down to the water jacket, so those don't come out easy either, but luckily all of those came out. And then we kind of tackle the issue of the stuck pistons in the bore. Um, those pistons we soaked in oil and soaked in oil, and it turned out we needed to remove the entire bottom end and pound them out one by one, but eventually they came out and that's really the result of sitting around with no oil in the cylinder balls whatsoever, no maintenance, just left it wet and nasty, and that's what we had to contend with. So yeah, once the thing was completely stripped by episode three, I kind of had just a bare engine block, but that still meant that there was a lot of work to be done. One thing I did was take off the frost plugs, and that revealed a water jacket where the bottom inch of it was just this cake of what was left of the coolant. So I had to power wash the inside of the water jacket, get all that crud out of there. And then I did something a little bit more unique. I reinstalled the frost plugs and I used this evapo rust process that got rid of or treated all the corrosion in the water jacket. And I was really happy with that process. I was gonna make a whole video about it, but it seemed like a lot of product placement for evapo rust, so I let that one go. Yeah, so after the water jacket was completely cleaned enough and I was happy with it, I was able to deal with the outside of the engine, which was stained from a cylinder head leak. It had this big rusty area in the middle of the block that needed to be dealt with. Uh, I used an acid etch process first, try to clean off as much of that rust as I could. And then once all the red rust was off of the block, I used this product called Rust Converter. It needed to do its thing for 48 hours and then I could finally do what I do with all my parts, which is a epoxy primer and black shiny urethane top coat, and that's the result you can see here. This is kind of like what I do to all my parts, and I really like the finish. It comes out nice. I use a lot of reducer in the paint, and it really lets you see exactly what the part is without any orange peel or anything like that. So next, I hope to start getting this engine together. What that means is cleaning all the parts, it's a lot of solvent, uh, nasty stuff, but it has to be done. So cleaning up those engine internals and dealing with the crankshaft, it has some special treatment that will show you where those plugs have to come out. I'm also gonna show you a bit of the hardware. So a lot of the fasteners that go on the engine, usually these things aren't thought about very often, but I'm gonna show you guys my thoughts and how to deal with the hardware that puts the engine together, especially the stuff that you see on the outside. I'm also going to go over the starter motor a little bit, but first, let's go to that crankshaft and I'll show you what those plugs are like. Okay, here's the crankshaft for our Junkie type engine. Haven't done much, just put it on the bench. Looks pretty good, none of the bearing surfaces look overly scratched or anything like that. But one thing I gotta do that was recommended to me by Hugh Pite and others is remove the plug right here that's been pinned in. Supposedly there can be sludge buildup, especially in engines that haven't had regular oil changes. So yeah, let's have a look behind that plug and see what's in there. Okay, my first attempt didn't work, so I got this huge bar attached. Two person job, now I'm gonna hold it while my dad twists it off, hopefully. Hold on. How long was it? Look at that. Look at that, so it is filled right up with some, some metal particulate or something? I don't think it's metal. I it's just it's sludge? Like of the oil, yeah. Ah, it's sludge. I think it's actually like uh, lead. Lead. 
Look at all that in there. Okay, well, Hugh Pite was right. Look at that. Gonna clean that out. Holy. Yeah, just gonna try heating up these plugs. They don't seem to get red hot very easy, but they definitely can get warm. Maybe that counterweight is just acting as a heat sink. Okay, so here's the reason why we took these plugs out. You can see this one's halfway filled with some sort of residue that they used to use in the old oils. And it's pretty important that we get this out because this area that the plug was hiding is kind of the connection point between these two bearing surfaces. And if that was to fill up or loosen and fill up one of these small oil ways, then we'd have no lubrication on the connecting rod and that would be a big mess. Just have a quick look at the plugs here. You can see we needed to heat up. Just looking at the plugs here, you can see we needed to heat up three of the six. Probably renew these and get new ones and stick them in once we've cleaned it all up. Holy, look at this. This is the bulk of the day's work and that's been organizing all of the engine hardware. So this is all the hardware from the junk E-Type engine combined with a lot of the other parts and pieces that we had laying around from other engines and previous restorations. So yeah, this is really an exercise in cleaning up all the hardware and deciding what to do with it before we reassemble the engine. This is a step that a lot of people would just skip because it's too much work, it's too much organization, and it's really getting into the nitty gritty fine details that some people just aren't interested in because they just want a working engine. They don't care if they have rusty bolt heads or not. So yeah, I kind of organized everything by a type or, or an area of the engine. And the hope is that with this type of organization, the engine can go back together faster because when my plater plates all these pieces, he'll keep them together in bags. When they arrive back, they'll be all together. Then everything can go back together in a smooth and efficient way. So yeah, I'm just gonna give you a tour of this hardware, quickly go over it, and then I'm gonna be able to get all this stuff off my table because it's bugging me looking at this. I just want it gone. So yeah, we'll start here with the first section here. You can, I, I, I know it's kind of sloppy, but I just wanted to write down the sizes of all this hardware in case I lose it previously. This is all the hardware here that puts on the timing cover to the engine. You can see the lengths there. I kind of wrote them down. Uh, right here, this is original alternator hardware. Kind of rare, you never see it. That three inch bolt and this uh, seven eighths bolt here, those are extremely rare with the uh, the spacer there and this is starter hardware it's one and five eighths sorry that isn't very legible so that's that hardware that'll all get plated you can see now some of it's gold cad some of it's silver cad got more gold cad here so gonna have to make a decision which way to go on that this is a series two engine that's why we start to see gold cadmium in there here's the crankshaft damper with its inch and one quarter bolts nothing special uh, this is interesting this is all the acorn nuts and the associated hardware that come with it. Uh, my plan with this is to take this rusty pile of acorn nuts and put it into some evapo rest and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. There is a lot of hardware there. You could probably do two or three cylinder heads. This is original water pump hardware for a series 2 E-type. You can see we have all these two and five eighths inch um, bolts and some three and a quarter ones and these two inch ones that only go into the aluminum so they have coarse threads and these spacer washers. Yeah, interestingly enough, I was looking on S&G Barrett and they sell these for $10 each. So yeah, it's good to keep, keep organized and save them rather than, rather than having to pay money to rebuy this hardware. Um, here's some of these uh, washers that go underneath the large acorns. I think this is only a series two item, but I'll probably get them plated up anyways. This is some of the hardware that goes into the oil pan. So this is the intake tube that goes to the oil filter some of the chainy zero clamps that hold the, the, the uh, hose line on there, oil drain plugs, yeah, this will be nice to get all plated and renewed. Got some cylinder head hardware here. All the stuff that goes into aluminum is coarse thread. This is for the oil line. And I think those are just for some blanking plugs. Here's a whole bunch of original brass nuts. These hold on the exhaust manifolds. Probably try to reuse some of those. 
And these are just plain old regular nuts. I know I'm crazy. I'm probably going to replate them and use them. They have just a slight different profile and shape than the new nuts you buy now. Uh, this is a whole bunch of mist hardware, so engine stabilizer, uh, distributor clamps, and studs for the bottom of the cylinder head. This is stuff that's just nice to have plated and look new. Here's all the bolts, 7 8 bolts that hold on the, the engine mounts, and I think they hold on the alternator bracket. That's right. Here's some of the crush washers that I see throughout um, the build of the engine, and these are all black oxide. And this is another really crazy hyper detailed item to do and that's all these little washers, these lock washers. And I think if I grab one here, just bear with me, you can see what a new one looks like compared to the, the early style here that's much smaller. It's more like a ring washer. I don't know how to describe it. But anyways, anything you buy new doesn't look right so I'm going to get these plated. This is all some throttle linkage hardware. It's all silver cadmium. Uh, that's really nice to get looking nice and fresh. These are all the pan bolts. So this, these hold on the, the, the aluminum pan bottom of the engine. They're all three quarter inch, except some of them are an inch and an eighth on, I guess, where it's slightly thicker. Uh, now this is interesting because if you look at it, they look like they should be silver cad, but if you just start standing a few up, not that one, but if I stand a few up, it kind of creates a picture. See there? Yeah, those are definitely gold cadmium. So on a Series 2 car, or 69, there was a change point where they went to gold cad on some of the hardware. Now, the 67 Mark 10, this is the pan harbor for it, and you could definitely see it's black oxide, and it has some different dimensions on there, uh, but that shows the difference. So there's a Series 2, Series 1, yeah, a lot different. And to finish up, I finally got some vacuum line hardware. I really like to retain this because I don't know if you see this, but it says 5 8 on there. Just keep it original. It isn't too expensive to get that plated up and reuse all those clamps. And finally, some of the oil filter hardware. Again, we have gold cadmium here, uh, this spout. Uh, one thing is this valve uh, to refinish. I don't know. I'm going to see if you can just dip this without having to sandblast it because the methodology to refinishing all this is to sandblast all this stuff and then electroplate it. So yeah, that's a tour of all the engine hardware. I'm sorry if that was a little long-winded, but that's the kind of thought process that went into how I'm gonna treat all the hardware you'll see on the outside of the engine. I don't think I'm gonna do any of the hardware on the inside of the engine because really I don't wanna mess with it. None of it's really corroded, and so I'm just gonna leave it as is and reuse it. Yeah, one final point about all this hardware that I miss, sorry, is that one of the reasons I'm going to all this trouble to organize and clean it up is to make sure that it's in good condition. And I actually found that some of these bolts, these two right here, in fact, from the factory, were stripped, which I find really interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I found out where they go and they actually go at the top here, they hold the timing cover on. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that those threads are okay, both on the bolt and in the block before we go any further. Here's some 4.2 starter motors and alternators. Of course, we'll need one of each for our engine build. I'm just gonna start by cleaning up these starter motors. They're quite oily from the engine. And one thing that's cool is they look like they haven't been modified or messed with. They look like original units. So once we get the grease and grime off, we can see what was painted, left bare or plated. All right, let's have a look at these clean starter motors. So the one on the right is from the high mileage Mark 10. The one on the left is from a low mileage E-Type. And really it's the same starter motor, just that one's been in a car a lot longer. And as a result, you can see that the black paint that they put on almost everything um, is absolutely almost missing from the Mark 10 starter motor. So if you were to restore this starter motor as it appears, it would be a lot of aluminum and black paint and copper. But if we look at the low mileage one, we can see here that there's paint over almost everything. They painted everything on this. I even see paint here on the plastic on the end. So the question is, if I was going to restore this 100% correct, I think the whole thing would be black. But I don't know, it's kind of an unusual thing. 
usually you see these things with the starter solenoid in silver and all the aluminum pieces in silver as well. So I'm kind of on the fence. I don't quite know which way to lean or whether or not to CAD plate all this hardware or not. But um, I'm going to go to Brian Roberts Auto Electric. They do all of our alternators, generators, and starters and see what Brad has to say and make a decision based off of all of that. Oh yeah, one last thing I should point out on these starter motors is there is a date code. So here's the one from the 1969 E-Type engine, it says 69. And the one from the Mark 10 is actually from 1972 right here. And I think these solenoids are dated, I don't know where. Oh, this one is right here, so you can see this was built in 69. And this starter solenoid, I don't know, it's really hard to make out the numbers there, but if you were a purist, you would get one of these things with a solenoid and a starter motor that have the correct date code. But that's pretty crazy because really these starter motors, when they're in the car, you don't see them at all. They're totally hidden under the intake system and they aren't seen at all. So really fussing about all the details on these starter motors isn't worth it, but it's an interesting thing to think about nonetheless. Well, I finally made a decision about this starter motor. Just had a little peek in this access hole at the brushes and the commentator and they look good. So I don't think this starter needs a full rebuild. Uh, what I did instead was I kind of took all, every, all the wiring and the terminals off. You can see them on this other starter here and sent those to CAD plating. And now I'm just going to paint this thing black. I'm going to cover up these terminals though. There's no way I'm going to paint those and uh, rebuild it that way. Uh, before I go, I'm going to leave you guys with a really cool project that we finished up earlier this year. It was kind of an expedited restoration of this beautiful 1970 E-Type. Uh, it was a really nice project. The car came up from California. It had 45,000 original miles and really no accidents or rust to speak of which made the restoration in seven months possible. Uh, it was really an enjoyable process and the result speaks for itself. I really like these 1970 cars. They have some unique details like the chrome around the mouth of the hood, little leapers on the side of the front fenders. Those are a dead giveaway that it's one of the very last series of six cylinder E-types made before they switched over to V12. Yeah, and this car was an absolute pleasure and a joy to do. Yeah, one of the things that really finished off the car was the hard top which came late in the project. It was kind of a fussy thing to restore, just being thin pieces of fiberglass. It wasn't a very expensively made hardtop, but wow, doesn't it look the part? It just really has all the right lines and proportions for the E-Type. And uh, Roadster with a hardtop, I think, is the best looking E-Type of all time. Well, this being the Series 2, it kind of has the bigger brakes, the better cooling, the better lighting. But one thing we did was we put on the triple SUs from Berlin's. There's a whole video on that. And once the car was done, we took it over to the Van Dusen Car Show. It won an award, which was wonderful. I made another video on that. If you go back in the history, you can see it. I think it's called uh, E-Type to Van Dusen or something like that. Okay, well, that wraps up this episode of My Junk E-Type Engine. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope to do a lot more work on this engine in the future. So stay tuned, stay subscribed if you want to keep track of where this engine's going to end up and see how it finally performs. As always, thanks for watching. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.